Hello, I'm Bob Marks, and today we're going to be talking about, well, testing astrology, a new method. If you look at the horoscopes of individual people, well, there are a lot of problems. Uh, for one thing, you need an exact time of birth. That's not exactly the uh, number one priority in the delivery rooms all over the, uh, the world. Uh, they're, they're not concerned with, uh, well, the, the, this birth is a real problem. Uh, the, the child may be lost, uh, but wait, we have to look at the exact time that the, the, the child takes its first breath. No, that's not a priority for them. Uh, and another thing, when you're looking at the charts of individual people, you need a tremendous sample. Uh, you need at least several hundred and actually since uh, what, what was that uh, that thing that Carl Sagan used to say for extraordinary claims you need extraordinary evidence you need a lot of cases this is not so uh, however if you're looking at the astrology of world events uh, for one thing you always know the exact location it's the capital of the country you, uh, you also know the exact time of, of many events. It's recorded to the minute. The exact time that World War II started, we know it. Now, uh, another thing, uh, when you're looking at the astrology of, uh, of world events, uh, the, uh, you have precise horoscopes. And from that, you can, uh, you can have uh, precise, uh, you can make precise forecasts. Uh, now, I have found a new technique. If there is a certain angle between major planets at a certain time, you'd expect things to happen. Uh, but a lot of times it doesn't happen right then. It may happen weeks, months, even years later. How come? Well, you have, to, uh, you have to look at the solar returns. Once there is an event, well, you have a birthday chart. Now, every year, the sun will come around to that exact place where the, uh, it was when the event happened. If you make a chart for that exact moment, it will show what basically is going to be happening in relation to that event for the next year. Actually, mostly for the next six months. Six months later, there is a half return. That's when the sun is exactly opposite the place uh, where it was when the, uh, the event happened. Oh, I should mention the charts must be precession corrected. You see, uh, the sun has to, well, we say return uh, the, uh, to the exact place it was uh, when the event happened, but that exact place is moving because the Earth's orbit is also precessing, moving around the, uh, the sun. You have to make that precession correction. Uh, the, uh, I've gotten into a lot of arguments with other astrologers over that. Uh, but uh, I have enough data. I even mentioned it in, uh, in a book that I wrote and I've given plenty of example charts. Unfortunately, today, I'm limited to just 20 minutes. So there's no uh, chance to really present charts and uh, you know, go into details. We'll have to take care of that during the question period. At, uh, at any rate, once you do this, well, let's take an example, the planet Uranus astrologically it's supposed to bring sudden and unexpected changes it strikes like lightning the planet pluto uh, the uh, works a little bit more slowly but it, it's a planet of power it's uh, it literally rules volcanoes and nuclear explosions when you get the two together you get sudden changes plus great power now the angles we look for are zero degrees when the two planets seem to be together from the standpoint of the earth 180 degrees, uh, and when they seem to be at opposite sides of the sky, and of course 90 degrees, the so-called square aspect. Uh, well, we've had a lot of those uh, over the uh, the course of the years. 
from uh, 2011 to 2015, uh, there were uh, seven squares between uh, the planets Uranus and Pluto. Uh, there were only there was only one in the 1960s. There was a conjunction, and then we had uh, several in the early 1930s. There were five of those. So how come we didn't have immediate effects? Because you have to look at the solar returns. The solar returns will show astrologically uh, exactly when the energy of the uh, the original combination is is going to manifest. Uh, so uh, it's uh, you know for World War II, for instance, you look at that uh, those charts that happened around the, the early 1930s. You set them for Berlin, and you start uh, well. Uh, again, I don't have time here to show you the charts, uh, but uh, they uh, they are quite powerful. And of course, for the uh, 2011 to 2015, in 2011 in September, uh, there was a 90 degree angle between Pluto and Uranus. Right. If you start making the birthday charts, well, let's make a birthday chart for uh, 2016. at six weeks before the election. If you do that, you make the, the chart set it for Washington, D.C., the Capitol building. The planet Uranus is right at the top of the chart. Oh, I should mention the strongest areas of the horoscope, the top, the bottom, the rising sign, the sign that's rising in the east, and the opposite point, the, uh, the setting sign. The top of a chart for a country is supposed to rule the leader, right? Well, what was at the top of the chart? The planet Uranus, sudden, crazy, unexpected events. You know, if you're doing charts for sporting events and you see the planet Uranus at one of the strong points, that's an indicator that the underdog team will win and everyone will be shocked. Uh, well, in 2016, uh, the election of 2016, the underdog won and everyone was shocked. Even the underdog, Trump himself, wasn't expecting to win. Uh, the, uh, uh, at, uh, at any rate, it's right there, right at the top of the chart, within one degree from exact. If you have an aspect that's within one degree of exact, it's powerful, especially to one of the so-called angles, the midheaven, the nadir, the rising sign, the setting sign. Uh, and uh, we, we'll see this again and again and again. I've got plenty of examples, which, of course, I don't have enough time to, uh, to present here today. But uh, there is going to be a question and uh, answer period. Uh, so uh, we could talk about it then. And uh, if you need further information, we could set up, uh, you know, uh, a, private, uh, uh, a private meeting. Uh, the... Uh, now, how about the cycles of the planets themselves? Uh, the planet Pluto, for instance. Whenever the planet Pluto enters the sign of Capricorn, the sign of organization, well, Pluto is death and rebirth. Uh, when you have death and rebirth hitting organization, well, uh, what, uh, what's happening now? <laughs> Pluto, uh, Pluto uh, is going through Capricorn at this very moment. Uh, the uh, when was the last time Pluto went through Capricorn? Uh, it was the 1770s, uh, and death and rebirth. Uh, it uh, it started. Well, the American Revolution happened then. The American Revolution was the start of a major shift from monarchy to democracy. That was the first one. Uh, the, if you go uh, a few hundred years before that, the previous time, well, that was the early 1500s. That was the Protestant Reformation, which totally transformed Europe uh, and it led to about 150 years of religious warfare. Uh, that didn't calm down until uh, 1648, the Treaty of Westphalia. Uh, the, uh, so that's what, what happened this time when Pluto went into Capricorn. It went into Capricorn in 2008. Remember what happened in 2008? Yes, financial collapse. The, the international uh, mortgage crisis. The, interestingly enough, Pluto is also a planet of high finance. It rules large 
large sums of money. Uh, the uh, uh, that's with the uh, with the planet Pluto. How about with the planet Uranus, the planet of sudden crazy and unexpected changes? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, with the uh, the planets, uh, when the planet Uranus gets going, it uh, it likes to turn everything upside down. It's the uh, the planet of uh, sudden and unexpected changes. And you know, if you look at the horoscope of a country, every 83 years or so, the planet Uranus returns to where it was when the country was founded. Uh, well, if you look at the chart of the United States, uh, when the United States started, when the Declaration of Independence was signed, uh, we all were already at war. Uh, and 83 years later, we had the Civil War. 83 years or so after that, Uranus was again in the, uh, the sign of Gemini, World War II, again, fighting for our lives. The planet Uranus is going to have another return shortly after the election of 2028. Uh, if, uh, again, this is a perfect test. Uh, I know, I know, it's only a few cases. Uh, it's like that famous uh, three chicken experiment, you know, uh, where the scientists reported that uh, uh, they were testing uh, this uh, medication on a uh, chickens. One third of the chickens died, one third were cured, and the third chicken ran away. You know, you, you do need a larger, uh, 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 you, you do need to, a greater statistical sample. But again, this is a perfect example. If the planet Uranus is holding true to form, this country is going to have a major crisis right after the election of 2028. Not to mention the Pluto returns. They seem to correlate with the end of empires. It happens every, what, 249 years or so. Uh, the uh, Rome managed to, uh, to escape that. In the third century, Rome split into three parts, but the central part had a very strong emperor, Aurelian, and he reconquered the other two parts in five years. Uh, and then was assassinated. Uh, the, uh, uh, again, we already had a half Pluto return. That was in 1939. That's when the planet Pluto was opposite the place where it was when the country was founded. We are going to have another uh, Pluto return uh, the uh, next year in the summertime. Wait a minute. Pluto was going to be in the sign of Aquarius then. The United States was founded with Pluto in the Capricorn, 27 degrees. Precession correction again. Tiny, 50 seconds of arc for every year of life. So uh, for a person, all right, that's usually not too much. For a country, well, we're already over 250 years old. So uh, uh, the, that's going to uh, put the Pluto in a, in a different sign. The Pluto return for the United States is coming uh, next summer, uh, just at the time of the uh, preparing for the election. Uh, so that would be an interesting test. Uh, at any rate, uh, I think that uh, that's about all I have time for now. That's, that's plenty to deal with. Uh